There's two classes we need to look at before defining our own states. The first is party, which represents nodes' identities on the ledger. And there's contract state, which is the interface that any state class in Corda must implement. So we can go to the definition of party first. And for that, I'm going to use a little shortcut. But just by tapping Shift Shift, I can search anywhere in Corda. So here I can go and look at the definition, for example, of the party class. So again, that's just Shift Shift, and it opens up this little interface here. Um, so let me jump to the definition of party. And party, you can see, is a pairing of a name, a Corda X500 name, and a public key called the owning key here. So the name is used as the legal identity of the party, and the public key is used to check signatures. All of the Corda internal API is written in Kotlin, although you can choose to write Corda apps in Kotlin or Java. The syntax is broadly familiar. Here we have a class of type party, and then we have a primary constructor here. Um, val is, represents an immutable uh, field. Here we have a value of name, which is of type Corda X500 name, and a value of owning key, which is of type public key. And we can see this interface extends the abstract party interface. Abstract party is a more abstract version of the party class, which identifies a party solely by public key rather than by name as well. So it's generally used when you're dealing with confidential identities. And next, we have the contract state interface. So again, double tap shift. I can just search here for contract state and go directly to the definition here. And contract state is an interface, and it's the interface that any state classes must implement in Corda. The actual states themselves on the ledger will be instances of classes that implement the contract state interface. And the contract state interface has a single field, participants. And participants is a list of the, um, the parties, the identities on the network, who should be notified when the state is created or modified or destroyed. We're now ready to define our own states. So I'm just going to throw together a few examples here, and then we'll leave you to implement token state um, during the exercises. So let me start by defining a house state, perhaps, which would define a house on the ledger. So I'll just create a new file here, house state. And the first thing I want to do is implement the contract state interface. And it's by implementing the contract state interface that I mark instances of this class as, um, as states on the ledger. And here I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, start up a public static void main here, just so I can do some coding in front of you. And so here I might say, well, house state state equals new house state. And so we'll see where we execute this logic later on. We'll do this kind of thing in flows. But this state we've created here is an exact example of how you create a state to issue onto the ledger. Um, as much as possible, Cordage uses standard Java coding conventions, and one of them is that states are instances of classes that implement a certain interface, in this case, contract state. And so this state object here is a completely valid state that we could then issue onto a ledger in a flow. Now, we can see here that we haven't implemented um, some of the methods. So again, in IntelliJ, a nice little shortcut, you can press Alt-Enter and then go and choose implement methods here by pressing enter. And then here we can choose to implement the git participants method. Um, and so this will define a git participants method for us. So remember what participants does. So participants is a list of parties who should be notified of any kind of the creation or the destruction or the modification of the state. Um, so we can leave this returning null for now, or maybe we want to return an empty list. So I'll just use Guava and create an immutable list here. It's just a little bit more concise, but you can use whatever you want. So I use Alt Enter to import, and there we go. Now, we've defined a house state here, but in practice, this isn't going to be a very useful representation of a house, right? It, it's technically a state class because it implements contract state. It has a list of participants, but it doesn't actually represent a house. And when we think of the things that define a house, perhaps um, the um, address or the owner 
or the value even, then we're not seeing that here, right? So we need to capture that information in our state so that our house state on the ledger accurately reflects the house state off ledger. And so the simplest thing to start with might be to add a string perhaps for the address. And here we've chosen to use a string. You could use any class you want. And here we're going to add a constructor parameter. And so we're going to um, create an address um, or kind of um, pass the value of address in the constructor. And we're also going to want a getter for our address. So again, alt enter. Uh, okay, I'll define that manually. So here, public string get address. There we go. So this is again standard Java stuff. We've defined a class to represent our state. It implements an interface which marks it as a state class. We've um, created a private field here and we've provided a getter for that field. And then we've allowed ourselves to pass the address in the constructor. And so here, now when I define my house, I might say, well, new house state, um, you know, um, one low more avenue uh, Berkshire. And there we go. And so here we've defined a state which has a certain address. So you can see here how we're starting to add information to our state that allows it to be represented on the ledger. And I might add another field in this case, which will be very useful, which will be the owner. So here I'm going to start create a, an owner field. And the type of this will actually be party. So here I have the owner. And so now there'll be an owner of the house identified by a name and by a public key. And so here we're going to add this to the constructor. Should we refactor that? There we go. And we're going to create a getter for it. So here's string, uh, sorry, party get owner will return the owner. There we go. And now we have to pass an owner here. And so we don't really have a um, an owner to hand. Um, we'll see how we get hold of the various identities on the network later. But here we might just say party um, uh, Joel equals null. And then we we'll pass ourselves in here as Joel. And so here we've created a new house state, which has the address of One Loan Avenue Berkshire and the owner of Joel. And the final thing we need to do here is just specify the owner as one of the participants. So we'll just add the owner here. So remember, by adding the owner here, that means that the owner of this house will be notified of the creation of the house on the ledger, its modification, or the destruction of the house. And we can define one more, perhaps, perhaps a contract state representing a container on a container ship. So let's do that now. So here we just go and we're going to create a new file, a new Java class. Let's call it container, container state, which represent containers on container ships. And again, we're just going to throw in a little um, pub, uh, main method to allow us to write some code. And so here we go. So we're going to start off by saying container state container equals new container state. So that doesn't represent a state yet, because of course, we haven't implemented the contract state interface. So if we jump that down a bit, then here we can say implements contract state. And that marks this class as representing uh, states. So in this case, our container is now an actual state. Again, we need to implement get participants. And for now, we're going to leave that as null. And just like before, we need to start adding some fields that will allow us to represent a container on the ledger in a meaningful way. So, you know, we need to think about what redefines a container. And so here we might say, well, private um, int width, maybe that's one of them, private int um, height, private int depth. There we go. Those obvious you know, things about the container you might want. We might want a private string contents. And here, instead of using string in practice, you might define your own class to represent the contents. And then we probably want um, a an owner, let's say, and a carrier. So these will both be of type party. They'll be identities on the network. So we've got all our fields. And now we should add constructor parameters. So let me just do that using shortcut. And now we have this very 
long constructor here, but basically it's just taking all the various fields that we need to pass in to properly define a state. And we'd also want to define getters here. Um, so there is a shortcut that's not coming to me now. So here I can just do very simply um, get uh, width. Um, return public int git depth and so on and so forth. Just defining getters that allow us to access the properties of the state once created. And here we have our container and so we might say well we want a container that's too deep, four wide, uh, too deep and then have contents of um, you know jetpacks perhaps so let's just stop putting this onto lines. And then the owner. So again, we don't have any owners to hand here, but we might just say um, party, um, the current owner might be uh, um, um, jetpack importers. We'll leave that as null for now. In practice, we pass in a real value. Another party carrier might be jetpack carriers something to that effect and then we pass those parties in. So we'll talk later about where we get references to actual parties on the network and where we actually create the states. All of that will happen within flows. For now we're just looking at how we define state classes themselves. So here we'd have jetpack importers and here we'd have jetpack carriers. So the last thing to do remember is this git participants field. So that's supposed to return a list of people who should be notified when the state is issued, modified, updated or destroyed. And so it's up to us actually. So we here define the logic, right? So we could say, well, we want both the owner and the carrier to be notified of any updates. That probably makes sense. So whenever the ledgers, whenever the status of this container changes, both the carrier and the owner are notified. But you could also change it so that only the carrier is notified perhaps, or perhaps so that only the owner is notified. And you can put whoever you want in here and they'll be the people who will be notified. So a common situation is perhaps to put some regulatory body or trade authority in there so that they're also notified of changes. But as the core app developer and the state designer, it's completely up to you.